Shadow Binders Volume 1 and 2, story and script by Cambria Pratt, artwork and edits by Tom Neon Pratt. Always support the artists at their official websites at shopclownfish.com or on their Indiegogo page for their Crimson Wren Volume 1 crowdfund right now. Links in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Royce and welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. I am so excited for you to be here to go over Shadowbinders Volume 1 with me. This is such a fun story and I'm having a blast with it. But I decided that I needed to share it with you guys. So let's get into the fantastical world that was created by Clownfish TV. Here we go. The story kicks off in the middle of an epic battle where it looks like this whale ship thing is flying around and just eviscerating all of its enemies, all these squid robot looking things. It's such a fantastic way to open up a story. I think all good stories should open up with a great battle like this. Anyway, we get over here to the bottom and we see some blonde guy and some blonde girl standing on the edge of stuff watching the battle take place as everything is just chaos around them. Then all of a sudden the chaos decides it's going to jump onto their ship and cause a little bit of a ruckus. So our two blonde characters here are doing their best to try to keep these pricks off of their ship and then all of a sudden out of nowhere a flaming lion shows up and decides to take out the rope that is letting these guys board their little place that they like to call home who is this mysterious man he appears up in the top laden in a dark shadow and then all of a sudden you get a tight shot onto his eyes and then wait a minute here now we switch characters. Oh boy, what adventure are we going on now? With the sound of an alarm clock, we are introduced to a very frantic young girl who seems to be late for school. She wakes up, shuts off that annoying alarm clock like all of us have brushes her teeth to try to run out the door, something I think that I've had to do many times in my life. Mia, 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 her mom shouts at her, you're 17, you keep missing the alarms, quit being a lazy bum. Wait, 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 her mom didn't say that. Maybe that was just my, maybe that was just my folks. Anyway, off to school. She gets there to meet up with her friends, and uh, of course her friends wonder, has she been dreaming about Chris again? Who is Chris, I wonder? He must be a sexy man's in this story. No, it was actually some crazy dream she had where apparently there was a battle in the sky and somebody turned the sky to fire. But before we could hear any more about the dream, the bell rings and it's off to class. Well, that didn't take long to find out who Chris was, but sadly we find out while Mia, Mia White, is daydreaming in class and staring at Chris. Oh boy, that's an awkward moment if I've ever seen one in my life. Teacher's asking her questions, she's not paying attention because Chris was singing to her. Then we get introduced to uh, Chris's little girlfriend here, and she is a piece of work. She says, I don't know why you think Chris would even look twice at you, Mia, or look at you twice, Mia. Chris is so hot and you're so well. I mean, why would he want you when he has me? And then just like every high school student who had no response for what just happened, well, bam! Mia's imagination takes off and squishes her enemies. As all of us, I think, probably had a moment like that. But nevertheless, she has good friends around her to reassure her that life is not, in fact, over. The day comes to an end and it's back home for Mia where we get introduced to Mia's family and her grandmother. <clears throat> her little brother's sitting there playing video games on the floor, wondering what kind of old junk that Mia's going to get of her grandfather's. I take special exception to that. I have a lot of old things that my grandfather had, 
um, before he died. And, well, I appreciate the living hell out of him. But anyway, brat little brothers aside here, the grandma presents her with some sort of a book and a puzzle box. But for some reason, she doesn't know where what they are or really where they came from. She goes on to explain that the journal is full of drawings and notes that her grandfather made. She's not really sure what they are. Oh, and it all happens to be in French, but she thought that Mia might like it anyway. And so Mia, deciding that she was very excited to get into her grandfather's old items, says, well, you know what? It's time for bed after her grandma goes away. And she's going to go upstairs and she's going to figure out what in the world all of this means. Could it have something to do with her dreams? I don't know. That's just something I'm asking. Why would I ask that? What do you know? You don't know what I know. <laughs> Foreshadowing aside, while Mia is trying to open up the puzzle box, she ends up cutting her finger. And then, you know, putting it in her mouth going, you little son of a... And then she puts her finger on the puzzle box and it opens and so now in this part of the story i'm like why are we getting into blood magic i thought this was a family friendly story but no apparently we're into blood magic which i have no idea i haven't read volume two we still don't know as of right now what the puzzle box is but it pops right open and inside inside is a ring looks quite gorgeous from what she can tell and she puts it on, but all of a sudden her hand starts to tingle. She's not quite sure what this feeling is. And then, without a moment's notice, she's gone. Out of her room, out of sight, out of mind. But where did she go? Falling into the atmosphere of this strange place, she lands upside down. Oh, and hey, there's the whale boat from the beginning. How fantastic is that? Now Mia has been transported to a brand new world, and it seems to be that that ring has a lot of splaining to do. So, with all of that being said, that's the first chapter, and how did you guys like chapter one of Shadowbinders? Thank you all so much for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys like the content, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and then hit that share button and share this with everyone you know. The other thing that you could do to really help me out is comment down below and let me know, is the style that I'm doing working? Does it work for you? Because, I don't know, I always want to get better, and what works for me today might not work for me tomorrow. So let me know what you guys think about the comics that I'm covering, the tone that I'm taking, how I'm presenting everything, and tell me how I can get better, because the only way that I can make this channel into what I think it could be is if you guys tell me how I can be a better presenter for all of you. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time, everybody. Cheers. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.